Good morning, Molly. What's up? Hello. Can I please have a service? Can you also check my tire pressure light? And can you top up my washer bottle, please? Oh my God, what the hell is it with women and windscreen washer bottles? Well, if you've got a dog, why would you bag yourself? <laughs> Thanks a bunch, mate. Yeah, by the way, there you go. Oh, Macchiata. thank you. Best think, service here. I think of you when I go to Tesco's. Anyway, have Thanks. a nice morning. Thank you. I'll expect in about half an hour, yeah? Yeah, no problem. Thanks. No problem at all. Hello everybody, I haven't really got anything to show you this week, so I thought what I'll do, I'll just run through what I'm doing in any particular day of the week, which is a load of uh, this, that and the other. So <laughs> it all makes for a video, I know. So anyway, the first job I've got is Moni's car. It's a quick oil change, I know oil changes are boring, they bore me to hell as well. So I'll make, I'll make it short. <laughs> This car has only done like 17,000 miles from new. And this is the three cylinder EcoBoost or EcoBoom. Anyway, I'm gonna pull the dipstick out and I'm gonna undo the oil filler cap. The reason for that is when I take the sump bung out, it lets gravity in. So the oil won't like splurge and miss the bucket and go all over the floor. Anyway, talking of these engines, have a look at this one. This is out of a, this is a three cylinder eco boom as well. It's out of a focus, but it's knackered. I think, I think it's been overheated, you know, because there's no compression in it whatsoever. So uh, I've heard, I haven't had much to do with these engines to be honest with you, but I've heard a lot of horror, horror stories. So we had to replace this, this one out of this focus because it was absolutely bloody knackered. Uh, anyway, let's get back to the, the, the task in hand. Yeah, oil filler cap off, dipstick out. Let's get this car up in the air and drop the oil out. Well, this looks a very straightforward oil change. The oil filter's right there. As some of you might know, some oil filters are in a right pig of a bloody position. But yeah, I can get to this one no problem with my grips. How tight is it though? Oh my god! <laughs> Yo! It's pretty tight, but I've undone worse. There. I'm having to use a bucket in our oil drainer because our bloody oil drums are full. So uh, they're getting emptied soon. Here we go. Uh, out it comes. Morning. Morning. How are you? <laughs> there we go. Yuck. Always make sure that the rubber oil seal is on the filter because it can happen that that seal can stay on the engine. And then if you, if you don't notice it, you could put another filter on it and it end up with two seals. <laughs> and one of them will blow out and you'll blow your bloody engine up. So uh, just a word of warning. Anyway, I'll let that drain for a minute and we'll stick our new filter on. One brand new oil filter. Here's another thing, there's always been a debate over this. I don't even know why I'm saying this, but the, the rubber sealing ring, I'll mention it again, do you put a, a, a little bit of oil on it or do you put it on dry? I've always put a bit of oil around the ring so it goes on a bit easier. <laughs> That's just my thoughts anyway. But before I screw that oil filter on, it stopped dripping now. I just want to clean up the surface that the oil filter is going to go onto to make sure there's no oil left lying around. Because the thing is, most people working main dealers, you'll know this, you can't leave oil drips everywhere. Once you change the oil and filter, you've got to make sure it's as clean as what it started. So I'll wind that on. And this oil filter, I'm just going to do it up. 
flip in. Yeah, nice and hand tight. Yeah, that's tight. Okay, I shan't use a strap to do this up. Uh, that is on pretty tight. Okay, there's the old sump bung. Looks like a 13 mil. Yeah, uh, it wasn't too tight. That's quite loose now. Right, I've got my bucket right underneath. Let's wind that out. Come on. No, I don't want to get covered in it. There. Out she blows. This is one of them sump bungs that have the rubber seal. Well, let me get out in the light. Yeah, it's got like a little rubber seal in it. So as long as that seal's not damaged, we can use that again. I'll give that a clean up. I've just typed this car into auto data and I've gone across to engine oil just to see I've got the oil anyway if I click on engine oil and it says filling capacity it doesn't tell you <laughs> it's just a blank but at least at least it tells me it's 520 uh, synthetic oil which I have round here There, 520 Eco, fully synthetic. So there's a gallon there, five litres, so I'm sure that's enough. Right, that's down to a drip. So I'm gonna give that a wipe. Stick our sump bung back in. The actual rubber seal on the sump bung was perfectly fine. These sump bungs do last quite a long time before the seals actually get destroyed. Before I actually drop this back down to the ground, I've never actually looked underneath one of these cars. I should think it's pretty straightforward. Brake pads are okay. Just want to have a general look around, make sure there's no leaks of any kind. I know it's only done 17,000 miles, but strange things can happen. It looks quite nice. It's a diddy little engine, isn't it? <laughs> Especially down the back there. there. There really isn't a great deal to it. So, yeah. yeah. Catalytic converter. I like new cars. They're, they're less trouble. Yeah. Not bad at all. You've got the old charcoal canister there uh, right fuel tank fuel tank straps are in in place brake pipes nothing's out of its clips everything's good there's not there's not really much I can say really is there I should I, what I ought to do is get a right old dog in here Something you can go around and pick pick holes in, like my old van. Anyway, yeah, it looks good. So <clears throat> I'm going to bring this down, bung the oil in it, and I think that'll be it. Right, I have my litre jug, and I shall put this in one litre at a time. 520 Eco B. Funnel at the ready. In she goes. In actual fact, I don't think I told you the price of this oil. This was, uh, it's not from a uh, Ford garage, this is like from a, from a motor factors. And I think it was around about £30 for the oil and the filter. Because this oil is, is not cheap. It's a bit of an odd oil actually, because most cars are like, these days either 530 or 030 but this is 520 anyway I'll tell you the price in a minute when I find the receipt but that's litre number one I'll let you know how much this takes actually when I get it all done yeah there we are oil and filter comes to grand total of £30.49 I don't suppose that's too bad now I've kind of guesstimated this 
I put four and a half litres in the engine. I reckon I'm about right, you know. So I'm going to put the dipstick back in, put the oil filler cap back on, which is like a twist on thing, like boom, that's it. <coughs> if you've never changed oil before, when you put the oil in the engine, you've got to start the engine up without revving it, just let it idle, because you've got to get the oil through the filter, because once the oil in the engine goes through the filter, the level in the engine will drop a bit. So, let's just uh, give this a start. I'm not sure where you've got to put your foot on the clutch on this car to start it up. I'm going to do it anyway. Here goes. Usually you can tell the engine note changes when the oil goes through the filter. Uh, that's all you've got to do. Just let it run for a five or six seconds. Nothing under, we'll have a check underneath later anyway. But now I'll stop the engine. And we'll, what I'll do now, I'll let gravity in again. I'll give that a minute or two to let it settle and then I'll check the oil level. This is it, I've taken the dipstick out and wiped it. Now I'm just gonna put it straight in and bring it straight out. And let's see what it's reading. I'll put that just there. Ooh, just short of the maximum mark. So I could probably put just a touch more. So basically, four and a half litres is about right. And I, it, would it would take just a fraction more and then we're good. Excellent. Well, that was easy enough. I guess I best not forget topping up the windscreen washer bottle. <laughs> yeah. What is it with women and bloody windscreen washer bottles? And they're always empty even when they come in for an MOT. Anyway, there we go. Loads of screen wash. Uh, that actually wasn't too bad. I mean, I'm impressed. <laughs> right, well, dipstick's back in. All filler caps on. Coolant level, brake fluid level. I've had a good look around the top half of the engine. Everything looks hunky-dory. I've been underneath as well, and I've rechecked the, the sump bung and the, any leaks, everything's fine, there's, there's no problem. I will point this out because uh, this car has a tyre pressure monitoring system on it, and it kept going down. Uh, the other week it went down, I had to replace the valve on the driver's front tyre, and this one was a bit suspect as well. And this one had gone, gone down to 26 pounds per square inch the other day. So uh, what we've done is I've put a brand spanking new valve in it now. So it was actually, the, the air was actually leaking past the, the valve here where it sits in there. So I put a new one in and you've got to unscrew the little sensor behind and put the sensor onto a new valve. But yeah, hopefully that'll hold it now. I'm pretty sure it will. That's my first job of the day done. Before I take it out, let me just show you how to reset the oil life. I think it's a lot easier if you sit in the car with all the doors <laughs> shut. You switch the ignition on and basically on the end of your indicator switch, which has got your trip button, you see there where it says the mileage, you, you just keep pressing this, this bloody trip button in there until it changes to the oil life reset. So there, there, da -da -da -da. there we are. What you do is you hold it in, hold the trip in, reset done, then you can release it. Done. And that's it. Back to the mileage again. Bingo. Look at the size of this exhaust. In, in, funnily enough, this is off a of BMW X3. It came off so flipping easily, I couldn't believe it. There's just like two rubber mounts at the back. And this is the original exhaust. And here, there's like a metal plate with four bolts. Once that's undone, there's a one more plate further up. And then you've got four bolts here, which they were all seized on bloody well bad, were to cut them off. 
with like a die grinder. They, they, if, you, if you get them wrong, you're in trouble. But anyway, the reason I've taken that exhaust off, there it is. This is a warranty job. 54 plate BMW X3. It's a 2.5i petrol. But here's the problem. It was making the bloody awful noise when you were driving it. I'll just move these shocks out of the way. The, bit, the prop shaft just there. If I rock the wheel, can you see that? Maybe I need the light in a better place. I can't really hold the light anywhere. But what you've got just here, if you watch just there when I rock the wheel, you'll see how much play. I've taken two of the bolts out. I've got another two to take out yet. You see the amount of play in that prop? The, the universal joint is completely knackered. And that was making the most horrendous noise. So uh, I'm in the process of unbolting this prop. And <laughs> it's a bit it's a bit dodgy to say the least. But you've got like four E-bolts. I think they're E12, something like that. Uh, a couple 13 mils in the middle at the centre mount. And then there'll be three more bolts here. I've got a prop coming from a company off eBay. Uh, I'll show you it when I get it. It hasn't arrived yet. But it was £250, this new prop. It's really manufactured prop. So anyway, I'm going to carry on and get this unbolted. Then I'll show you the damage to this UJ when I get it off. These four back e-bolts, I'm not going to use an air gun on them. I'm going to do them by hand because they're flipping tight and I don't want to strip them but it's like <laughs> dodgy. Come on. Yeah! Woo, that's got it. These ones at the front, I've only got to undo three of them, the ones that go onto the, the, the lugs on the back of the gearbox shackle, wherever it is. Come on. Yeah! There we go. Oh, they spin out quite nicely once they're undone. We're all unbolted now. I've undone these two centre mount nuts. And that can come down. Wait. Well, that, oh my God, that's almost coming off. I was wondering though, what do you take out first? The back bit or the front? It looks like the front comes off first. That's more or less just slid off. Because there's in the middle of the prop, there's a slidey section. So that's actually come out. So I can lower that down. Way <laughs> steady. The problem is, turn that light around. The rear is stuck on the flange, on the diff flange. So I'm gonna to have to belt that off somehow. You saw a lot of these prop shafts they'll get stuck. But this this front section, that was that will slide off. But I'm gonna just put it up here. I can't actually put it anywhere. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to get an assistant to hold this while I try and whack it off because uh, I don't want to try and juggle it all while I'm hitting it and then it will fall on the floor but yeah, where that prop goes onto that diff range they, they tend to get really stuck on there so I should get a hammer and a screwdriver, a big chisel bar or something can get it off That flange was stuck like shit to a bloody blanket flipping it Ah, it's off. Blimey. Oh. <laughs> that, that was on well. Okay, let's get this thing off. Last nut. <laughs> there we go. In the vice it is. The prop shaft I've ordered for this, I had to give them the part number off this prop which is actually on here and also I had to measure the length of it so hopefully they're going to send me the right one but I do know it comes with a new rubber donut at the front which is good and uh, it comes with a new centre mount even though this one's still pretty good this centre UJ is perfectly fine nothing wrong with that 
but yeah flipping heck driving this car well this this SUV it was making some right old squeaking squawking noises <laughs> at the back and it was like when you put it's an automatic when you put it into drive or reverse the whole vehicle goes clonk like into drive put it in reverse it goes clonk it's like flipping heck something is really loose at the back end but yeah you look at this just that UJ in there See, you've got like needle roller bear, bearings in like a encapsulated capsule sort of thing all the grease is obviously gone but look at that that is absolutely yeah <laughs> you can imagine the damage this could do if that came off if that completely broke it'd, it'd take a lot to actually do it the other thing i noticed is these are staked in uj's and I've, I've been down this route before with my Vito van. I'm not going down that route again. So for the sake of 250 quid, a new prop seemed like a really good proposition when you consider that the prop for my Vito van was nearly a grand, which I didn't get. I got a cheap and nasty bloody UJ, which didn't fit properly, but I made it fit. But it took a bloody long time to do it. But now nah, for 250 quid, this uh, I'm just going to change the whole thing. But yeah this woman come in and sort of like my car's making a lot of noises there's something not quite right it's actually bloody right there's something not quite right also it's supposed to, to turn like that the, the bearings in, in these two UJ's either side perfectly fine but I can't even turn it the other way like that let me see if I can get a screwdriver in there that is <laughs> that is flipping tight Oh my god. It's going very it's very very notchy. <laughs> yeah. Oh it's it's freed up now. <laughs> what a surprise I can put it back on. <laughs> Not really. But no. Uh, no if you if you hear noises like usually when these UJs do go, you'll hear he'll either hear a squeaking or a squawking kind of noise. And like I say, on this one, you get like a clonk because it was, it's, it's taking up all that. When you put it into drive, the gearbox into drive, it's taking up all this play. It doesn't seem that much here, but when you actually put the, the transmission into drive, it's, it's that movement is quite a lot because it's at the back of the prop. But yeah, but the new prop hasn't arrived yet. So when it arrives, I'll measure it up to this one and hope it's the right one, put it on and that'll be the problem solved. Prop shafts arrived. Oh, it looks nice. And it's greasy. <laughs> I suppose I better take it out of its wrapping and see if it matches up with the new one. Right, we've got a problem. Although it might not be that much of a problem. Looking at these two prop shafts, the rear end looks good. They come up to the centre mounts, they look good. And now we come up to the flipping <laughs> to the donut at the front. Can can you see the problem? I would say the new one is flipping huge compared to the one that come off the bloody car. And I can tell you for now where the bolt holes are, the distance between them bolt holes. These ones are a lot further apart. They are never going to fit on that flange. So I would say. And even looking at the flange here, there's a much bigger gap here where my finger is compared to what there is here. I can't even fit my finger in there properly. So uh, this front section is different to this one. Do you know what? I gave them the part numbers as well and it's still wrong. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I've got a cunning plan. I'm going to pull this section off and I'm going to see if this section, front section, goes on to this new prop because it's only the back bit I want really to get myself out of trouble so let's see there's the splines that's off because I say that the length of the prop shaft if there's any deviation in it the, the splines here will make up for that so let's see if I can get this one off there we go now, 
I'll, uh, I shall pop this one onto here and see if we can get it in. It's going. Well, it's on. Yeah. Sorry, I'm trying. I'm trying to juggle the bloody. Because I've only got my phone with me today. I haven't got a proper camera, so <laughs> I've only got one hand to do all of this. But that's that's slid in now. So uh, I reckon. I know they're both the same length. Spin them round. I reckon we're in business. I can now bolt this back on. I reckon you're going to fit. Yeah, I'll give that a go. Just at least, the, at least the splines are the same. The same splines. Anyway, let me show you what else is going on around here. We've got a 04 plate Volkswagen Golf FSI. It's been heavily overheated. It needs a new engine. We're not going to go down the route of bloody taking a head gasket off and all that because it could have a cracked head. And it's got a timing chain in it as well. And it's a load of messing around. And these engines, they're very cheap to buy. On eBay, they're like 300 pounds for one of these. So when you consider what it would cost to buy a head gasket set and everything else to do a head, head job and get a skim on the head, you're probably going to be the same amount of money as what it costs to buy a bloody engine. So that's all in bits, waiting, waiting for the new engine to arrive. We've got a service going on over there. And I'll show you what we've got going on outside. I'll find the bits. I've got two cars out here. Hello, hang on a minute. Hey amigo! You're on YouTube, Bonnie. Lovely. <laughs> Live. Just got back off your dinner break. Yes. Here, your uh, your tyre pressure warning light hasn't come back on, is it? That's because I fixed it. <laughs> yeah, the bloody tyre pressure TPMS keeps coming on in her car, but had leaky valves. This Ford Cougar has been sat over by the back fence for. Flipping it, I don't know how long. Let me just switch it off, it's a bit noisy. Yeah, this is a push start button one as well. Yeah, this Cougar, it lost all of its coolant. And what was basically happening was, down the back of the engine where the high pressure pump was, the pump was leaking diesel. And the diesel leaked, there's two hoses down there. One of them is a short curly hose, like a right angle hose. And you've got this one here. And I don't know, yeah, look, look how squidgy it is. <laughs> that is like, where the diesel's got onto, I've cleaned it since, but where the diesel's got onto it, it's got all soft and squidgy. And there's lit just there, it sprung a leak. And it was pissing water all over the bloody place. So I've just put, that, this hose here was 65 pound from Ford. But uh, it comes with all the connectors and everything, and it was an easy, easy to fit at least. So I put the hose on, filled it up with water, ran it up, been around the block, and it looks okay. I'm not getting any pressurisation in the cooling system. Everything looks good. So uh, hopefully that's that one sorted. And then we've got, an... oh, I was... well, there's one thing I was gonna show you on this, because the battery had been disconnected. And you see all the windows. Like if you want to, it probably won't work for me now, but when you've got one touch windows, and you press the button just once, they don't come down, okay? Or they don't go up with one touch. So what you do is you hold the button like that, all the way down, so the window comes all the way down, hold it for a second or two, let go, then hold the button again, so the window comes all the way up, keep the button held, then let go. Now, one touch. I should be able to do one touch, I'm not sure it's going to work when the door's open on this. Let me shut the door. 
I can do the one touch here. No, it's not working. Unless you've got to do it by the, by the buttons here on the, this driver's door. So I hold that all the way down. Now I hold my finger pulling the button up until the wind is all the way up. Then I let go of the button. Now I do the one touch down and one touch up. Yeah, it's working now. Sometimes with the doors open, it won't allow you to do the one touch. I'm not even sure these back ones have got the one touch. Yeah, they have. So if I press that once, that comes all the way down. Then I press it once and it goes all the way up. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, enough of that. Yeah, this is actually quite a nice Ford Cougar. This one is coming up for sale. It even has a reversing camera. But yeah, it's been, it's been sat on the back fence for months now until we finally got round to fixing it. And all it needed was a couple of cooling hoses. So uh, that's the two litre diesel. It's running as sweet as a nut. Anyway, I've got another one here, which I'm doing right now. <laughs> I'm fixing about four or five cars all at the same time. 05 plate Audi A3. Another cooling problem. Well, this, this one's got multiple problems. It's going to the Midland North Stratic gearbox place to get the gearbox sorted out. But this one's pissing out water as well. There's a housing so it's just above the gearbox at the back of the uh, block. And the, the seal here, where it bolts onto the block, was like pissing water out here where the, the rubber had gone flattened. The rubber just gets flattened after so much, so long, deteriorated. So, uh, new housing from, from trade parts specialists, and that's fixed that. So, I'm just running this one up, and uh, that'll be that one done. This is actually quite a nice car. I think people actually prefer the, the three door versions of these. This being a five door, it's uh, all family friendly though. Anyway, what I'm going to do, I'm going to slap the bloody prop shaft onto this X3 and hope that it all bolts up and fits okay. I'm sure it will. Now I've swapped them bits over. Before I stick this prop back on, I've gave that flange in there, just where the, the prop actually sits in this little recess here. That's where it is really tight. I've given that a good scrape with a screwdriver. And I also use like a wire brush to get in there, try and clean it up as best as I can. And a bit of flipping WD-40 to boot. So uh, <laughs> let's hope it goes back together easier than it come apart. Well, well. Uh, I was a little bit concerned that wasn't going to go on. It was a bit tight going on at the front and I wasn't even sure because when I offered the back up there was a bit of a gap at the back like it was it was the wrong length <laughs> but then when I put the front back up it, it kind of all leveled out so the, the centre mount is not bolted up yet. I shall uh, bolt that up in a minute and then I shall put the four bolts in here. I put this back exactly where the old markings were so uh hopefully it'll be okay everything lines up the bolt holes all line up perfectly and it's it fits on it's right up against the flange so i shall put these three bolts in then bolt up the center mount and then we'll have a look and see if everything levels up and it all looks good having an extension by with a slight wobbly end is quite useful sometimes get that in there I should get all these in then whack them up nice and tight these three 18 mil bolts they actually fell back in <laughs> nice and easy anyway I've chopped the wheels so... that's tight we're all bolted up now apart from the center mount So uh, that's about it. I can just tighten that up. Yeah, that's it. And that one. Bingo. Right, how are we looking? 
that's all tight. Uh, it all fitted on rather okay, really. It was a little bit tight going on. But like I say there, it, it will, you know, you've got uh, the splines, it will move on the splines when it moves anyway to take up any play. Uh, the centre mount's all in place, that all looks good. It all fits quite nicely. <laughs> you never know with these aftermarket prop shafts. They did ask for the length of it and everything, so we measured it and gave it to them. We gave them the part number of the old prop and they still got it wrong. So for £250, we've got, uh, we've got half a prop shaft at least. So, uh, but at least I know the front half is, is the original and all we really wanted was the back bit. So the customer, customer will be very happy now. They've got no more bloody noises and clonking coming from their prop shaft. So yeah, that's it. Now I've got a ton of under trays to put on and stick the bloody exhaust back up. Yeah, it's actually one great big long heat shield which covers the entire prop shaft. It just bolts up with a load of little 10 mils and that runs all the way down to the back. So once that's all in place, you can't even see the bloody prop shaft. So <laughs> I think you can only just see a little bit through the gap. So uh, anyway, I shall get all this bolted up and then uh, get an assistant to lift the exhaust up because it's bloody heavy. In actual fact, before I put this exhaust back on, I'll just point this out again. The studs here, the, the actual nuts on these studs, they, they, they seize up and there wasn't really much left of the nuts. That <laughs> nuts had deteriorated away. So we literally had to cut them all off. I think there's only one that we actually managed to undo with a conventional socket. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You can see the marks where we've, we've cut them off. But we've saved the studs and I now have uh, some new nuts which I'm going to put on and then we'll bolt that exhaust back up. And these have got like this shake proof washer bit built into the nut. I can tell you for now, this flipping exhaust is bloody heavy. <laughs> Let me show you. What we had to do was two of us lift the bloody exhaust up, slide it onto the studs to start with and get some nuts on so it's held. And then we had to go all the way around to the back and there are two exhaust rubbers up there, uh, one either side of that tailpipe. We had to slide it onto them with the aid of a flipping stand. That was the basically the exhaust held up then, the rest of it is straightforward. Uh, two flipping metal brackets, one's got a little earth lead on it, four 13 mils which hold more mounts on it, but yeah. That is, I will say though, for a, for a huge, great big exhaust, it come off quite easily and it went back on not too bad. The only, the only annoying bit about it all was them nuts at the front we had to cut off. I've just gone down the exhaust, sort of like banging it, and there was like a vibration noise, something not right. And I've just realised this plate here, the, the one closest to the front of the car, it's got like a, an angled bit in it. And I put it the wrong way around, so this, the plate was actually hitted up against the bloody tin shield on the exhaust. So yeah, that angled bit goes towards the front. That's obviously why. Now, let me get my hand out of the way. There. Now, now it won't hit the bloody exhaust. <laughs> Door. This is it. Oh my god, it's a woman drive. I can hardly fit in here. How's the bloody seat go back? Oh, that's it. Okay. Just bark it up. And the first thing it was doing, if I put it into drive or reverse, it would clonk like hell. Go bang. Oh, that's nice and smooth. Oh, that's lovely now. All the clonking noise is gone. <laughs> We're on the move. I don't like this ramp. It's a very old ramp. 
Anyway, it's uh, I guess I'll just park this up now. I'll just spin it round a little bit. Nice. Here we go. Into drive. Woohoo! <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> That's it. Lovely. That drives as smooth as silk now. Uh, let me out of here. I'm not really keen on BMW X3s, you know. I think they're a woman's car. A, a guy would have to get the X5. This, this is the smaller version of the X5. Not bad though for the school run if you want to go up and down a curb or two. Anyway, that's it. That's that job done. Now that all them little jobs are done today, this engine, this is the one, the Duratech HE, that I replaced a week ago. Because this one was the one that was over, overheated badly by a yank. It carried on dry, it ran out of water. Well, the top radiator hose, which goes on there, was, uh, had a leak right where the Jubilee clip was. It lost all its coolant. The guy continued to drive it until he overheated the engine that bad that the compression was going through the water jacket like you wouldn't believe, and it was blowing the water out of the bottle, out of the expansion bottle, so. We just changed the engine as we had a spare engine in another rental. So uh, this engine's scrap, I ain't gonna do nothing with it, but the automatic gearbox, as far as we know, is a good one. So this is worth keeping. So what I was going to do, well, I've got a little bit of time, it's getting late in the afternoon now, so I'm gonna take this gearbox off, <coughs> which is pretty straightforward. It's just basic ring of 13 mil bolts all the way around the bell housing. But there's a few things to note. The starter motor would have to come off uh, because in there, there are like two 13 mil bolts. You'd need a deep socket to undo them. There's one at the bottom of the starter as well. There may be a tin plate over here, but it's, it's long gone. Once these two starter motor bolts are out, there'll probably be another bolt at the back of the starter motor, which I've already taken out. So like that. That's why you need a deep socket. Then that, the reason I need to take the starter out is because I need to get to the torque converter nuts or bolts because they're gonna have to come off. I mean, you can pull the gearbox off without undoing the torque converter bolts. The problem is the torque converter, if you've done that, the torque converter would stay on the engine like flywheel and you would have flipping oil everywhere it would make a right bloody mess that's why it's best to take the torque converter off with the gearbox it's a <laughs> it's a lot less messier <laughs> so uh now the start motor's dropped out of the way i think there's like a rubber piece in here which will have to come off yeah there's the rubber bit you have to pull out if you don't take that rubber bit out you can't get to the torque converter bolts now, i've taken the starter motor off i shall keep anything that's good because there's a lot of rentals here and they're all automatic. So basically you've got a 13 mil for your main live. And then you've got another 10 mil, which goes for your, like, your solenoid when you turn the ignition on. Uh, but yeah, that, that's a good starter as far as I know. That still works, so I'll keep that. But in there, there's our flywheel. And if I turn the engine over by the crank pulley, let's see, yeah, there we go. That's one of our bolts, nuts, should I say. So they are pretty tight, I have to say. <laughs> so be prepared. It, well, once if the engine's in the car while you're removing the gearbox, it's not a problem. But as this is swinging in the wind, it's gonna be a bit of a struggle. But I'm gonna try and get a socket and big bar on there and try and undo it. Okay, that's the last one undone. But let me just point something out here. These nuts, for God's sake, whatever you do, when you take them off, 
especially when you put well when, when you're putting the gearbox back in let me just get the nut off do not drop that nut down there because <laughs> if you put the gearbox back in and you drop the nut down there you're probably going to have to take the gearbox out again unless you've got some kind of magnet that can fish it out but with that last nut off and they're, they're pretty they're tight all the way getting off the threads uh, you'll know it's loose that was four bolts you can hear it see I can feel that's loose now just by getting hold of the stud and rocking the stud so that's the <laughs> my arms are actually feel like jelly now after I'm doing these nuts so anyway I'm going to undo the rest of the bolts around the bell house and then pull this box off there is one bolt on the top of this gearbox which is a right pain to get to and there's like a there's a water hose here, heater hose, which <laughs> actually sits right in the way. It's easier to disconnect the hose and get it out of the bloody way, but it's still hard to get to. You can, you can get the bolt out about disconnecting the water hose, but it's right in there. <laughs> it's like flipping it. Oh my God, it's, it's, it's not an easy one to get undone, but once you get the hose out of the way, you can at least get a ratchet and socket on it and undo it not very nice but i will say maybe this gearbox is all the bolts once they're cracked undone i can literally get my fingers on on them on the bolts and undo them because they're all finger tight so at least they're not tight on the threads all the way although that might not be the case with all gearboxes there we go that's it out and the one next to it over there that would have your earth strap on it. So we're nearly done. I've got all the bolts out down the starter motor side and underneath, there's a few bolts underneath which have to come out and done. There's a few plug connectors. Uh, you've got one here, which I've already disconnected it. That goes on there. Uh, that's for your selector mechanism and all that. And then you've got another plug connector which goes on here. So pull that plug connector off. Yeah, just in here where I've got a piece of rag, I'll pull that out. There's a union there. Uh, one of your pipes that go round to your oil cooler for your gearbox goes in there. And there's another pipe, I think they're 15 mil nuts on them, goes here. So you undo that one as well from like underneath the wheel arch. And that pipe would run round across here and round to your oil cooler. I will point out though, as I found, I've done these a few times, so uh, the little speed sensor, I believe it's a speed sensor on the end of the gearbox here, it's, it's probably best to take this sensor out, it's only 1.8mm and they just pull out, it's probably best to take this out while you're removing, removing and refitting the gearbox, it's just a lot easier with it out of the way. Uh, maybe if you're just taking the gearbox out of the car by itself, you might not have to touch it, but if you're taking the engine out like I did, the engine and gearbox together through the top, then this does get in the way and you, you run the risk of smashing this. So I'll get it out of the way. I've just undone this bottom bolt. <laughs> it's like, that is not gearbox oil. That, that's engine oil. And that's just come dripping out from under there. So, oh my God. I guess, uh, yeah, nice. That's definitely engine oil. So uh, <laughs> it looks like he may have overheated the, the rear main oil seal as well. So it looks like that's bloody taking a shit. Anyway, I have one bolt left to undo. Then this gearbox should literally fall off. I'm gonna get some wooden blocks to put it onto. I was going to show how this came off in real time. But unfortunately, as I lowered the crane, the gearbox literally just fell off. So, and the torque converter has stayed inside the gearbox. So, out she comes. There. So anyway, if, if this was in the car while you were removing this gearbox, or even out of the car, you really want to sort of like get a lever in through the starter motor hole to make sure this stays in the gearbox. Because as, as I drop the crane down, the bloody gearbox come away at the top quite a bit by that much of a gap and the, the torque converter actually came out a little bit, hence all the oil. So, <laughs> so you see what happens if a torque converter comes off 
the actual gearbox itself, the oil will come pissing out loads of it. See, look at that. That's not the engine oil that came out earlier. The engine oil's down there, all the black stuff. But that's all gearbox oil. We're gonna talk about it come away a little bit. Uh, so I'll probably have to put a new seal in there anyway, just to make sure. And then this gearbox can go in storage for the next gearbox that blows up. But yeah, that, that torque converter is now, I've pushed it back and it's all fully back into place. You'll know when it goes back into place because it will go clonk and you'll know it's fully back in back home properly. So, but yeah. And this engine, I'll just take off anything that's good on it. I think I might need for the other rentals. And then the scrap man can have the rest. Anyway, that's it. I think, uh, I think these gloves, <laughs> <laughs> They've definitely seen better days. Oh, what a... So yeah, I'll tell you what, the weather, it's like snowing one minute, sunny the next, then it's snowing again. I keep taking my clothes, put my hat off and then putting it back on again. Anyway, that's it for today. That's just sort of like, uh, the kind of what, what my day's like. Four or five different jobs, could be anything up here. Uh, and then just pods around with a scrap engine if you like. So, <laughs> but anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Adios. Oh, just one last thing. Yeah.